Hey there, Awana families. This is Pastor Carlos with this week's Council Time message. As we continue in Philippians, let us review some of what we have already learned. First, we are to look to the interests of others. Second, we are to have the humility of Christ. Third, we are to work out our salvation, remember, with fear and trembling. Fourth, we are to trust in the Lord that He is at work in our lives to accomplish His purposes. And fifth, we are to do all things without grumbling or disputing. As we continue in Paul's letter to the Philippians, we come to three examples of godly men. Paul gives us these examples as a way of illustrating what godliness looks like. And, and those men include Paul himself, Timothy, and Epaphroditus. And we have already considered Paul, and so today we're going to focus our attention on Timothy. Let us begin by looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 24. Philippians 2, 19 through 24. But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare, for they all seek after their own interests, not those of Christ Jesus, but you know of his proven worth that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Therefore, I hope to send him immediately as soon as I see how things go with me and I trust in the Lord that I myself also shall be coming shortly. I am entitling my message, The Example of Timothy. We will consider seven observations regarding Timothy that shed light on how we should conduct our lives. Well, let us begin with observation number one. Timothy was mentored by a church leader. Timothy was mentored by a church leader. In verse 19, Paul tells the Philippians, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, clearly. Timothy was with Paul, and he ministered to Paul during his Roman imprisonment. But this raises a question. When did their relationship begin, and how did their relationship develop? Well, Paul first met Timothy during his second missionary journey. Paul, on that second journey, convinced Timothy to join him, and Timothy agreed. And from that point on, Paul poured his life into Timothy. In other words, Timothy was mentored by the great apostle Paul. Timothy willingly put himself in a position where he would be mentored by a church leader. Boys and girls, you do well to put yourself in a position where you can learn from and be mentored by leaders in the church. An example of this is when you attend council time in order to learn from the council time teacher. Another example is when you attend church on Sunday in order to learn from the Sunday preacher. And these are, uh, th there are other ways by which you can be instructed and mentored by the church leaders, and you can think about those ways. I trust you get the idea. Well, let us now turn to observation number two. Timothy was surrendered to the Lord's leading. He was surrendered to the Lord's leading in his life. Paul says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly. The fact that Paul could count on Timothy to travel to the Philippians shows he was surrendered to the leading of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, this attitude of surrender is a theme of Timothy's life. Timothy surrendered to Christ under the teaching ministry of his mother and grandmother. Timothy surrendered to Christ under the teaching ministry and mentorship of the Apostle Paul. 
We get a sense from our passage today that Timothy was surrendered to Christ regarding the possibility of being sent out to the Philippians. And we know that Timothy was later surrendered to Christ in his willingness to be the pastor of the Ephesian church. Did you know that? Timothy would go on to become the pastor of the great Ephesian church. Uh, young friends, I want to encourage you to be surrendered to the Lord as he leads you through his word and the mentorship of godly people in your lives. Observation number three, uh, Timothy was concerned for the spiritual well-being of others. Timothy was concerned for the spiritual health, the well-being of other believers. Consider Philippians 2, 19 to 20. Paul says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly so that I may also be encouraged when I learn of your condition, for I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. Timothy was a man of God who was genuinely concerned for his Philippian brethren. He thought about and felt concerned for the Philippians, and Paul wants his Philippian readers to know this. Even though you are young, you can still have concern for the people of God. In fact, it is appropriate for you to have concern for the spiritual well-being of others. Uh, but how are you to develop such an attitude? From where does this concern for others come? And the answer comes as we turn to observation number four. Timothy was committed to the interests of Christ. He was committed to the interests of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our concern for others is rooted in Christ. We know that Christ is concerned for his people. As we ourselves connect to Christ, we will grow in our concern for people as well. We will grow in our concern for the church of Jesus Christ. Listen carefully to Paul. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. For they all seek after their own interests, not those of Christ Jesus. Here we see the reason Timothy was so concerned for the Philippians. Uh, the reason is that he was focused on Christ and the things that concerned Christ. Since Christ was concerned about his church and since Timothy focused on Christ, he was therefore concerned about the church. And as we focus our attention on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will grow in our concern for and commitment to the interest of Christ. We will grow in our concern for the church. Observation number five, Timothy was proven to be of great value, proven to be of great value. In chapter two, verse 22, Paul states, but you know of his proven worth that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. In this passage, Paul talks of Timothy's proven worth. Timothy over time had proven himself to be faithful, reliable, dependable, a man of God. Paul could depend on Timothy. He was the type of person who, who would get the job done. He had proven this time and time again, and, and this is why Paul could declare, you know, you know of his proven worth. Indeed, Timothy had proven himself to be of great value. Observation number six, Timothy served alongside others faithfully and obediently. In 2.22, Paul writes, but you know of his proven worth that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Timothy served with Paul as if a child serving his father. This tells us a lot about Timothy. He honored respected, and even obeyed the leadership of Paul. And he embraced serving the Lord and others alongside Paul. What about you, young friends? Are you happy to serve the Lord alongside others faithfully and obediently? 
Uh, now we turn to observation number seven. Uh, Timothy was motivated to advance the cause of the gospel. Again, Paul declares, but you know of his proven worth that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel or the advancement of the gospel like a child serving his father. Timothy's goal in life was to advance the gospel. He wanted the good news of Jesus Christ to be made known. He wanted to see sinners coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he dedicated his life to proclaiming Christ, that Christ came into this fallen world. Christ lived a perfect life. Christ died on a cross for sinners. Christ was raised from the dead. Christ ascended into heaven and he sat down at the Father's right hand. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Timothy was motivated to proclaim these gospel truths. And with these seven observations in mind, the great apostle Paul concludes by saying, Therefore, I hope to send Timothy immediately as soon as I see how things go with me. And Paul knew that Timothy was the perfect man to send to the Philippians to bless his dear Philippian readers. And boys and girls, let us never forget that Timothy was the great man of God because at a very young age, he committed his life to Christ and he experienced the transforming power of the gospel in his life. And boys and girls, you are never too young to surrender your life to Christ. You are never too young to begin being used of the Lord as a blessing to other people. And, and as you do, as you surrender, I am confident that the Lord will raise you up to be a great blessing to the body of Christ, uh, even as Timothy was a blessing to the body of Christ as well. Well, my young friends, thank you for listening. I look forward to our next council time together. Until then, may the Lord greatly bless every single one of you.